Hey guys, it's Bailey Wiki, and we are uh, going to go through some Monk's active tile actions today. I decided I want to create a series that just focuses in on some actions just to show you what you can do with these, because uh, sometimes it's not intuitive. Uh, remember, um, you can always refer back to Krogard's wiki. I'll link it from the video. Or that gives you an opportunity to learn what these actions do if you uh, don't want to watch tutorial videos. So we're going to look at a few different actions today. Uh, we're going to look at uh, how to create traps and check entity counts. We're going to look at how to create teleports between scenes. Then we're going to look at how to automate combat and make combat sort of initiate when players walk through certain areas. And then I'm going to show you how to use the random number action to make random things happen sort of automatically as your players are moving through scenes. In this case, it's going to fire off some really cool sound effects. So of course, we're going to use Monk's active tile triggers for most of this. Uh, that's what creates the uh, the bulk of the automation. And then we're also going to use Tagger module. And I might mention some other modules as we go, but Monk's active tile triggers and Tagger are the two things that are going to make most of this stuff work. Also keep in mind that we're on Foundry version 11 as of the time I'm doing this tutorial. Uh, we've got D&D version 3.0.3. Some of you are not quite on that yet. I recommend you wait if you have modules that you are interested in making sure that they work with the new D&D 5e, like automation modules, things like that. Um, but just keep in mind that when you look at this later in time, if you see changes in the actions or other things, that's because the rate of development for the platform and for Monk's Active Tiles is very fast. So you may have uh, new options, they may change their names. If that happens and you wanna catch up to speed, go to Krogard's Wiki, which I'll link in the tutorial uh, description as well. Krogard's Wiki has usually the latest and greatest of what all the actions do, examples of each one, things like that. Now we're looking at a scene from my recent release um, and some of the stuff I'm going to show you today is part of premium module, like these little tiles here, uh, what I call active tiles. You don't really need that stuff, right? They're just quality of life. They're handy and pretty helpful. Um, but like a lot of the things here, I'm going to show you how to get for free or just we're going to use stuff that's free out there. Okay. So now we're going to look at the check entity count action first. Notice as I step into this tile, which is actually a fireball tile, it's the, a free fireball tile from FX Master. Just play the animation for you. So you're going to need this tile and an explosion sound effect. And I'm going to show you how this works. Once you drop in your tile, we're going to click into it. And we're going to, as I said, use the check entity count action. Now, this can be really helpful if you want to make things like pressure plates where you have to have more than one party member on or, you know, a certain number of your party members have to have certain attributes or be hold, holding a certain item, that kind of thing. So you can use it for a ton of stuff. In this case, we're going to use it simply just to make sure we have enough tokens within the fireball to trigger it. So check entity count, we use ch tokens within the tile. That's this one. And then greater than two. And then if it's uh, if it does not meet that criteria, I'm just going to stop. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to keep going. I'm going to show this tile. And notice I used the show hide action on the beginning and the end. That's just because animated tiles may not reset when you first load the scene and you don't want it to be visible to your players. So I just like to make sure that this tile is shown when this activates. And at the end, we're going to hide it again. We're going to then use the tile animation action. Uh, to go ahead and select this tile. We're going to start the animation for everyone. We're then going to play a sound file. I use, this one's in my uh, BailiWiki Premium module, but you can find more of these on like uh, freesound.org, for example. And I'm going to click restrict to scene and prevent sound from starting if already playing, just to cut down on any sound chaos. And then I'm going to attack the tokens within this uh, within this tile. So let's look at how we set that up. First, we need to create a special actor. In this case, I created just a new, you know, new NPC actor, non-player character actor called Trap Master. And the Trap Master just contains other, uh, it contains all the traps I might use in my world. And this Trap Master is just going to sit here in my sidebar. I'll never drag it into a scene. There's reasons you might, but for the most part, we won't. And all I did was created a, a new uh, attack called Fire Trap. In this case, I'm using D&D &D 5e, 
but you guys may be using another system. In which case, you just set up the attack based on your system, 48, fire damage, dex saving throw, flat DC of 16, for example. That becomes the attack that we're going to leverage with the attack action. So the attack action's up here. To all the tokens within the tile, I'm going to target, or I'm going to use this actor, Trap Master. Once I select that, it will give me the different weapons available for that. I'm going to use the fire trap. Type of action, I'm going to say attack. I've heard, although I haven't tested this extensively, you can use either chat card. Chat card just, just display, displays it on the chat card. Um, you can use an action if you're using other game systems, or I've heard if, even if you're using MIDI qual, you might use that. Um, by the way, I'm using, uh, we're on the D&D uh, 3.0, the new D&D, so I'm not going to assume that automations are quite working yet, but we'll experiment here. Let's try using the regular attack action. All our players could then just go here and click the deck saving throw. And then they could, uh, we could roll for damage. 14 fire damage, and we can apply that to our player. So all your players could do that. That's a non-automated way of doing this. With MIDI qual and other things, you can automate some of this damage. Next thing we'll look at is how to create a two-way teleport. It, what you'll need is just drop in a tile. This could be like a tile of a staircase. I've got tons of these in my premium modules. This is also an uh, active tile from my premium module, but you just need any tile. This one would just be hidden from players. So use the GM knows is there and it's active, but your players don't. Uh, so we want to drop in our tile and we want to give it a tag. In this case, I'm going to call it target 1A. So I'm going to make a pair of these called target 1, and then this will be A and the other one will be B. Then I'm going to come over here to triggers and I'm going to say on enter, you can see everything else is the same. I'm going to create two actions. One is I'm going to play a sound file. I like this. It's a steps down sound file. These come from my premium module. You can get more on freesound.org, but I just like uh, creating something that's a little bit different than just a visual cue that they that they moved. And then I'm going to teleport. So I'm going to use the teleport action for the triggering tiles or for the triggering token. This time I'm going to select its coordinates. I'm going to say target B because that's the pair of this that I'm going to create. And I'm going to, and by the way, I'm using tagger module here in order to create these tags. So I'd say target B and then the scenes, I'm going to search all scenes. I don't, I don't care where the, it's, pair is. I just want to teleport to it, but I could also just select a specific scene and go there. I'm going to snap to grid, delete the source token. Um, and you can see a lot of helpful tips here. If you're teleporting between scenes, you probably want to delete the token in the old scene. I'm going to preserve that token. So whatever status or anything else they've got will carry through to the new scene. And then I'm going to other avoid other tokens in the destination, just so I don't crowd my, my tokens on top of each other. We'll update that, and then we're going to copy this tile, right? So this is just a regular old tile. Now, our destination is going to be this uh, entrance gate kind of bridge area. So we'll paste our tile now. This is one it's a, an exact copy of the one we just made. And now we're going to click into it, and instead of target 1A, we're going to say target 1B and click add tags to lock it in. And we're going to come over to triggers. Everything else is the same. We're going to come in here to teleport, go into our tag, and we're going to say this one should go to target 1A. Again, all scenes, or we have to specify the scene we're going to send it to. Everything else is staying the same. So that's it. We just made a pair to that one. So let's test it out. Okay, we've got confirmation that we've teleported. As a GM, it won't automatically follow me. If I was a player walking into it, it would automatically change the scene for me as well. And here I am in the new scene. And if I walk back over the tile, it takes me to my destination, right? Easy enough. Next, we're going to automate creating a combat. So all I did here is I used two tiles. One is the tile that my players are going to step on. 
And the other tile is a reset tile, which actually doesn't even need to be on the scene. I've just got it here so you can see it. I mean, it can be out in the, in the edges of the scene if you want to. It's actually automatic. You don't have to interact with it. I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Uh, and then all I did was took some enemies and I dropped them around the scene where I want them to spawn. And then I just hide all of them, right? So you can select them all with shift and toggle them hidden or unhidden. And then I'm going to use mass edit just as a little tip here. I hit shift E mass edits, another free module, and it's going to open up a dialogue where I can edit all of my tokens at the same time. You don't have to use this, but I find it's really easy. And we're going to give them all the tag of enemies and we'll click add tag to lock it in and apply. Now, if we double right click here, we can see this one has the tag of enemies. This one has the tag of enemies. So we're good to go. Now let's jump into our tiles. This one's pretty easy. We're going to start by showing using the show hide function, any entity that has the enemies tag. We're going to go in here, add the enemies tag, click save. Then we're going to show them because that's the state we want to um, change them to. And we'll just click update. Next, we want to add to combat. So this is the add to combat action. We're going to use the same tag of all these enemies, adding them to combat, and then update. Next, we need to add our players to combat. So we're going to use the add to combat action again, select all of our player tokens, wherever they are on the scene, and add them to combat. This time, we're going to check the start combat toggle. Uh, you can use landings as instructions. So in case you need to remind yourself, also content creators like me will put these in to tell you what you need to change as a GM, if you're going to use these. In this case, we want to change the target combat playlist down below. This landing doesn't actually do anything else, but give some instructions. So we're going to click into here and see that we're using the playlist action. Playlist actions let you manipulate playlists. So if we go to our playlists, I have a playlist, playlist called Bailiwicky Castle. And we're going to play that at this volume level and we're going to loop it. So this happens to be my combat playlist. Okay. Now we're going to go to our reset tile, go to triggers, and we're going to say upon combat ending. So you can't actually trigger this tile unless you like right click it and then and you manually trigger it with this button here. Um, so it's really just set to automatically trigger anytime combat ends. So when combat ends for our actions, we're going to see that we're just using two actions, the playlist action again, Bailey Wiki Castle, which I targeted uh, over on the right. And then I'm just saying stop that. And then I want to hide all of the enemies that have the enemies tag. So if they're defeated or whatever, I'm just going to hide all of them and it will clear everything out. So let's test it. So my players will be coming through here and all of these things, including the tiles are invisible. Once they cross this threshold, we can see that our combat has been initiated. So it rolled uh, initiative for everyone, threw everyone into the combat tracker. And now you can hear our battle music is playing, right? So we have our battle, we fight it. And then when we finally go to end our battle and combat, and you can see here, our counter was cleared out and all of our enemies were hidden again. Easy enough, right? And finally, we're going to use the random number action here. Let me demonstrate really quickly what it does. So my players walk over this tile. And you can hear the sound of bats walking over again. They hear this uh, growling beast in the background. There's another animal noise. And there's actually a cooldown, So you can see it didn't launch a noise the second time I walked in. So let's talk about how to do this. This is a really great thing. Again, this tile is invisible to your players, but as they move through a scene, you can have these noises randomly generate and it's a cool effect for them because they don't really know what's causing it. So if we open this up, let's go to triggers. So we're going to trigger on enter. Um, I leave token must have sight to trigger if you haven't noticed that um, just so players trigger it. And then I have a five second cooldown. That's so it doesn't continually go off anytime multiple players are going across. You can even change this cooldown to something like 10 seconds or even 15. 
Now for the actions. So we're going to start with the random number action, right? It's down here under your filters. We're going to set it to 35% and then we're going to check. So if it fails, we're going to uh, go to check one. If it succeeds, we're just going to move forward to the next step. Okay. So we're giving ourselves a 35% chance to succeed. If it does, it'll play this sound file. This one's in my premium sounds called uh, Great Ancient Shouting. It's actually a Michael Gelfie sound. Uh, a couple of these actually are. We're going to restrict a scene, prevent from starting, playing already, again, for cutting down on chaos. But now, if we fail that first random number check, uh, which we have a 70 or 65% chance to fail it. We're going to jump to this landing check one. So let's look at, look what's under that check one. We're going to stop when reached in code. What that means is that if code is running, if we get to this step and then we move on to the next one, it's going to stop us uh, from going any further. So this works like a stop sign for anything before it. So once we get through that, or we jump to that one, we're going to continue forward. And now we have a 35% chance to succeed on this one. If we do, then we're going to play this Kikimura sound. Otherwise, we're going to fail and go to check three. Another 35% chance, this time playing a Sleeping Dragon. Now, Sleeping Dragon is actually a long looped sound. So what I want to add there is I want to use the delay actions action. I'm going to delay it by six seconds. And then I'm going to stop the sound for everyone, but I'm going to have it have a three second phase. So it's about half the length of um, the length I gave just so I can, because it's a, it's a looping sound. I want it to fade out. So it's going to go for six seconds, but three seconds of it are fading out. And again, once it plays the sound, it stops, it doesn't go any further through the stop sign. So if I failed that 35% check, I go to the last one, or sorry, the next one is check three. That's going to be the dragon roar. And then if I fail that, uh, then I'm going to uh, ultimately go to uh, check four, which are the bats. Um, now, what you can do when you get all this set up is change the, the percentages. So obviously, if I get to check four, I have a 100% chance of playing bats. You could introduce um, another random number check. Maybe you don't always want something to play, right? So you can come in here, play around with your percentages, and that's how you adjust things. When you're all done, have fun freaking out your players. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Let me know in the comments if there's other actions you want me to cover. I'm just going to cover many of them. I think that are interesting here going forward in the future. And I'm going to try to make this uh, really searchable for you. So you can just come in and reference a particular way that I built a trap uh, or used a particular action. So um, feel free to look through our automating foundry playlist for the action that you're looking for. And that should bring up to the top of the list a video that you might be looking for. If you're looking at the longer form videos, just remember that everything is split up into chapters so you can uh, scrub through those pretty quickly to get to what you're looking for. And in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this and have fun making your maps.